Okay, I'll call to order the June 20, uh, June, I'm sorry, June 13th, 2023 uh, regular meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Our mission statement is learning for life. Vision statement is Southgate Community Schools, the best choice for students and parents. Brings us to the uh, approval of the agenda. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda as stated. Okay, I have a motion by Dr. Pomponio. Is there support? Support. Support, support by Mr. Green. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we have an agenda, and that brings us to presentations, uh, the Spring Titan Awards. Yes, it's uh, my pleasure and honor to uh, introduce our athletic director, um, Ms. McVicker and Mr. Dobek uh, and Ms. Hinsman, uh, who are going to speak today and present the Titan Award winners for our spring seasons, as well as our three sport varsity athletes and our robotics recognition. So I'm going to turn this over to them. They have some very special recognitions to give. Good evening. We have quite a few awards to give today. Uh, we're going to start with our figure skating team. Uh, so if they'd like to come up and I'll, I'll say a little bit about them. So our figure skating team has a very long season and um, over spring break they competed and uh, earned third place in their class. Um, they're a phenomenal group of athletes who work hard day in and day out, um, and they are really dedicated to their craft. So we're excited to uh, honor their uh, third place at States tonight. So the next group we're going to honor is our Southgate Anderson robotics team. I think we got a long line. I'd really like to thank our students this year for allowing us to have uh, another successful season uh, where we qualified for the state championships for the third time in our team's history and for the second year in a row. Um, this, this year's students is very young. We lost uh, all of our seniors from last year and it's currently entirely made out of ninth and 10th graders. So we look forward to the future that they'll bring for the team 
And to celebrate the present, where and with our state qualification, we also were able to win uh, two more judged awards for team sustainability and gracious professionalism. Um, we also have some, some of our uh, middle school students uh, already involved in the team, and we're really excited to see what they're able to do uh, on our new uh, middle school and elementary school programs. Um, and with that, I'd really like to, again, once again, thank you all for everything you guys have done. Woo! Yeah! There we go. <laughs> Woo! All right. Good evening, I'm Beth Hinsman. I'm the athletic director and assistant principal at Davidson. Um, we had two school record breakers this year. Um, one of them couldn't be here tonight. I don't think Victoria, Victoria is not here. Okay, um, and the other one is Charlie McKay. If I could have her come up. So Victoria um, Suzuki uh, is an eighth grader on our track team, and she um, broke the school record in the high jump at the, at the show at the end of the year. Um, she jumped four feet, 10 inches, um, which beat the school record of four feet, eight inches that was set back in 1995. Oh, wow. Okay, so before these kids were even <laughs> born. Charlie here um, is our distance runner. She broke two school records this year and actually kept breaking her own all season. Um, she uh, broke a record in the 1600 meter, um, which is four times around the track, right? Okay. And she ran it in five minutes, 29.34 seconds. Um, and she beat the previous record by 32 seconds. That's huge um, mm. for that distance. <laughs> and she broke the school record for the 3,200 meter, which is eight times around the track. She ran that in 12 minutes, 17.89 seconds. And she beat the record um, since 2019 by 41 seconds. Oh. Pretty impressive. <laughs> She also uh, beat her mom's all-time record of uh -huh. the mile by seven seconds, I do believe. <laughs> so that was another accomplishment she had. <laughs> the best thing about Charlie, too, is she's only a seventh grader. So she'll be with at Davidson one more year, and then she'll help out the Anderson team. Next up, we have a uh, figure skater who actually was a state champion, and to speak on behalf of her is Coach Julie Goddard and Jenny White. <laughs> I just like to say a few things. This is the first time since, well, the second time since 2003 that our high school figure skating team has placed in the top three the last two years. So we're super proud of them. And this is also the second year that we've had an individual as a state champ. Last year was Adeline Hales, and this year it's Bridget Godabout. We've also had several skaters our team place in the top four in the last two years. We've had multiple skaters. So we are super proud of them. 
and look forward to great seasons moving forward. Oh. Good job. Congratulations. Now it's time for the Middle School Titan Awards. So um, a Titan Award is something we give in each sport, each season, um, and the coaches choose this person. And a Titan Award is someone that represents everything that it is to be a Titan. They practice hard. They're, the, they're a great teammate. They um, improve throughout the season. Uh, they're the ones that pick up the equipment, carry it for the coach, um, making sure that all the, everybody on the team is supported all the time, um, come to practice with great enthusiasm. Um, so we're really excited about presenting these Titan Awards. And a lot of times it's very hard um, to, uh, for the coach to pick these. Um, but these are this year's Titan Awards. So I'm gonna actually start with track. Um, I'm gonna ask Mackenzie Irvin to come up. She's one of our track, um, our track coaches this year at Davidson. And I, um, she's gonna say a little uh, something about each of her Titan Award winners for track. Hi, so like Ms. Hisman said, um, I'm Mackenzie Irvin. I'm one of the track coaches this year. Um, just a quick little thing about um, our season this year. We had about 91 kids on the team, which was awesome. So like Ms. Hensman said, it was very hard to pick, um, you know, uh, team or athletes for this uh, award. But um, they all, like kind of what she said, they all showed perseverance. They came to uh, practice positive attitude. We didn't ask much of them. They just came, they ran, and they showed um, incredible strength and leadership. So um, the first one is Charlie McKay. <laughs> Again, Charlie broke two school records and we're super proud of her. Um, the next one is Cole Cornett. <laughs> Cole ran the 400 this year and was in the four by four and he did an incredible job. Congratulations. And the last one is Mariah Crump. Uh, Mariah was in all of our relays this year, I think, and she showed incredible leadership throughout all, each and every one of her relays. Great job, congratulations. The next sport I'm gonna talk about is baseball. Um, so our first athlete um, is from the eighth grade team is Chase Lovanos. Chase, oh. Chase played outfield on this year's team, but most of all, I think the seeing Chase as a sixth grader and how much he has grown matured and become a true athletic leader um, in the school is amazing. I'm so excited about um, Chase's, uh, Chase's role in the team this year. And um, Mr. Green, make sure you get his name. <laughs> um, our seventh grade um, baseball Titan Award winner is Nathan King. Nathan was the catcher on this year's team and really took over the role of leader. Our seventh grade team this year had um, 
two kids that had never picked up a baseball before um, and a lot of kids that were just beginning and the coaches really looked for Nathan to um, help out bring the team together um, rally the troops so really really proud of these two boys Um, now I have our uh, Titan Award winners for softball. Um, first, I have Ella Doty. She is our Titan winner for eighth grade softball. So our eighth grade team was coached by um, Coach Cameron. And, um, oh, sorry. She's, she, I'm sorry, she chose Ella. She was the pitcher, mainly a pitcher on the team, which in softball, that's super important job. Um, but she also uh, was a, a great leader on the team. Um, we had to pull up some seventh graders to play on the eighth grade team. Um, so uh, she, Ella did a really nice job, an outstanding job this year. Our two seventh grade softball um, Titan winners um, Mr. Grabitz couldn't pick between the two. Um, so we have Reese Gartside. <laughs> and Mallory Addison. <laughs> Reese was the shortstop on the team, a true leader. And Mallory, they both are full of energy and come to practice every day. Um, with a smile on their face and ready to help the team out in any way they can. Congratulations. All right, so next we're going to do the high school Titan Award winners. Um, and once you receive your certificate, if you can, please just stay on the stage so we can get a big group photo as we go through uh, there. So uh, first off, uh, we're going to start with track and field. Uh, the Titan Award winner for uh, the boys' side of the track and field uh, is Drayden Long. Drayden uh, truly exemplifies what it is to be a Titan. Um, if you were able to read uh, one of the posts that Dr. Irvine had in regards to uh, Drayden and throws is that he took it upon himself to learn videos and kind of put together a practice plan because uh, it's very <sighs> difficult to find a throws coach uh, for many programs and so a lot of times the kids come and practice and then they one of the coaches either coach Pasek or coach Luba would come over and help after they got done with the distance or the sprinters and uh, Drayden would take it upon himself to get the videos together and kind of put that um, you know basically mapping out a whole practice for himself as well as the other throwers too and uh, definitely if you see him on the football field too as well he is a natural leader 
and he is definitely um, one that we could see win multiple times throughout his high school career and only being you know a sophomore right now so uh, congratulations to him uh, next up is the girls track and field uh, which goes to Reese Hughes As you look at Reese, she has a smile on her face all the time. Uh, she is a hard worker, uh, not only uh, with cheer, but also track. She is just a unbelievable athlete and a great person to be around. You catch her in the hallway every morning. She says hello. Um, she likes to joke around. Um, and she is my second favorite freshman. I'm just kidding. You're my first. See, she wasn't even paying attention. Um, but she is uh, like a daughter to me in the sense I've seen her grow up since middle school, and uh, it's good to see her uh, get recognition for this award. So congratulations. All right, next up, uh, Coach Tori Singstock uh, sent this in for girls' soccer. Uh, the Titan Award is being awarded to Hope Shuck. <laughs> Hope is a leader. She always puts her teammates and peers before herself. She is always respectful in any situation thrown her way. She's tough physically and mentally on and off the field. She always works hard or works her hardest to be the best version of herself that she can be. Hope is selfless, committed, honest, and more importantly, Hope is a team player. With the focus and determination that Hope has, she can achieve anything she sets her mind to. Congratulations. Uh, next up, on behalf of the varsity baseball program, uh, we will like Mr. Andrew Green to speak on behalf of that. Um, when I thought of the Titan Award, something that's the epitome of Southgate and an athlete, uh, for me, for the baseball program, uh, it was pretty easy. I think that spring sports is really hard sometimes, especially if you're a senior and you're not a starter. Uh, it, it, it can cause some issues sometimes, those of us that have done spring sports. Um, I was really hesitant uh, during tryouts because I really liked this young man and I didn't know uh, how he was going to receive um, telling him that I had probably a log jam at the position he plays at and he hasn't played in a while and he had a choice uh, I didn't want to waste his time if he wasn't going to play a lot and there wasn't a defined role for him going into the season uh, some seniors were just pitchers um, in baseball you can have a pitcher only some were courtesy runners um, and he was going to get in whenever he could yet through the whole season 35 games and uh, playing when we could get him in and, and spot starting him. He never missed one practice. He was never late. He was always cleaning up. He always had a quip or a joke. He was extremely fun to be around. He's going to be my personal pilot in the future. He's extremely smart going to uh, Michigan State for aviation. And he is absolutely um, what I would consider the epitome of a team player. And that is Jacob Howard.
<laughs> He's going to U of M, my bad. <laughs> he said he'll never step foot in Michigan State. <laughs> Okay, this is from Coach Jack, uh, the JV Titan Award um, from Coach uh, Lemieux. It is my pleasure to award Luke Anderson the Titan Award for the 2023 Spring Junior Season. <laughs> Luke exemplifies what it means to be a Southgate Anderson Titan. Anderson was constantly striving to do better and always Luke always volunteered to help carry equipment and do anything that the team needed. In addition to his athletic ability, Luke was a model student in the classroom. We look forward to all the great things that Luke will accomplish in the coming years, even though you didn't stop and shake my hand. We'll keep them coming here. Uh, next up is the varsity girls tennis. Um, Coach Cord uh, decided to choose Ashley Stench for the Titan Award. She may be here, she may not, because they had a banquet. Um, she is a hard worker, team player, and one of the best attitudes. She never gives up out there, and even if she's losing, she stays mentally tough and can find a way to win. She's a great example of how you should carry yourself on and off the court. So congratulations to her. The girls' uh, JV tennis uh, was going to Yalitza Stench. Coach Karen Dunholter had said that um, Yalitza is a natural leader on the team, encouraging her teammates, coaching them, and always taking the lead in cleaning up the courts and putting equipment away. So we congratulate her on this award, too. Next up, um, we're going to go to Boys Varsity Golf. Uh, Jordan Connors for the Varsity Golf Team. <laughs> Jordan actually won it last year as a JV player, and this year it kind of was the same thing that happened. Um, he was an individual who uh, had basically did everything we asked him. Um, he is a golfer that picked up the club for the first time, didn't know what to do, and he basically worked hard at practice every day to get better and better at it. Um, he even purchased a new set of clubs, which was a game changer for him. Uh, he still has uh, you know, another year of eligibility, but he was asked to go to play JV. He was asked to play varsity matches. Whatever he was asked to do, he did. Uh, never complained. Uh, was always there and was always eager to stay at practice, try something new, uh, and did everything that both myself and Coach McKay uh, asked him to do. And for that reason, we picked him for the Varsity Titan Award winner. Uh, for the JV golf team, we had uh, Evan Moraski, which I do not believe he was able to attend. Uh, we wanted to give him the recognition. Uh, he was a freshman that came on. Uh, he's another one. We get a lot of them that never pick up a club before and they don't know what to do. And we're sitting there uh, coaching them up, learning things from the beginning. And just like Jordan, he was willing to put forth the effort and the time. And we ended up having 16 kids on both the JV and varsity together. So we had uh, you know, two full teams. So that definitely says a lot for each of the kids that come out and play because they definitely want to be involved. So thank you. <laughs> Next up is varsity girls softball. Coach Drusniak, if you're coming down, please.
<clears throat> All right, so first off, we're going to do the uh, JV, Junior Varsity uh, Softball. And this Titan Award winner is going to Jenna Hinsman. All right, Jenna was chosen because she embodies what it means to be a Titan both on and off the field. Jenna is the first and foremost outstanding academically and a model student in school. On the field, she is a leader and her effort is second to none. Jenna does not miss practices and she's the first to grab the team gear and make sure that it gets back to where it's supposed to be after practice and games. She's also dependable about making sure that the dugout home or away is left in good order. She communicates very well with the rest of the team and is always positive in the dugout during the games. Jenna is extremely coachable and the student of the game, which also helps other players. Jenna pushes herself and others to be better athletes. Uh, I count it as a blessing to be able to coach Jenna and will miss coaching her when she moves on to varsity. Being a Titan is about being an example for other athletes and future Titans, and I cannot think of anyone better than Jenna Hisman, and that is from Coach Barry Walker. Now we're going to do varsity softball. The uh, varsity softball Titan Award is going to Taylor Midlars. Taylor has shown herself to be the epitome of what the Titan Award represents. This is a player that exudes the definition of a teammate. Taylor is willing and able to play any position on the softball field, and yet she knows that we ask her to do certain things and play specific places because it is what's best for the team. Her leadership can be seen first in her actions and also, when needed, verbally. She has a drive and commitment to the team and the program that we have seen since she was a freshman waiting to be brought up on varsity. Taylor is a competitor and shows her commitment to the team and bettering herself all year long, from playing on travel teams, coming to off-season weightlifting and open gyms, going to camps, and working on her own time. I can't think of a better representative from our team for this award. Thank you, Taylor Midlars, for everything you do for softball. That is the spring. We're all the spring. We got a few winners left. We got to do that after that one. So we'll do the spring pitcher. Congratulations. Good job. Good job. I'll leave you. I think they can hear me. There we go. All right, so uh, we have a few. Um, winter ones that um, we did not uh, because of a banquet that were here and uh, they said they're going to be here tonight but we're going to go with the uh, bowling ones which is Danielle Novotnik Brandon Renaud Colton Morin. And our other Titan Award winner for competitive cheer with a smile on her face 
is Selena Shakur. We have one more spring team uh, Titan Award winner, and this is for rowing, and it is Ava Kolakowski. <laughs> Coach Leka said that Ava is very receiving of this award. She displayed great determination, dedication, um, and that she sets the tone and standard for those around her and everything that she does. <laughs> Ava, you got something special. <laughs> Congratulations. All right, now these next awards are three varsity sports. And what the Downriver League does is it is a patch that goes to the individuals that have uh, played three varsity sports in one season. Uh, it is a patch that is given one time. Uh, it's just like a varsity letter. Uh, all of the schools, Downriver, uh, hand a patch so you know many people say well if I play multiple years we just get it the one year once they obtain uh, that one year where they're on three varsity sports and it may be their freshman year it may be their sophomore year maybe their junior maybe even their senior um, so we definitely like to recognize that because it's very difficult to participate not only in one varsity sport but three alone and sometimes four and what uh, this honor is is it's something that needs to uh, you know be recognized before we used to do a picture and everything like that but what better way than to have recognition done with the board of education and so going through um, the list of all of our sports and we're going to call you up it's not alphabetically or anything but we're going to same thing when your name is called you're going to stand on the stage and you're going to make sure that you are um, recognized with all the other fellow athletes at the time. Uh, so the first one we have is Malik Fidel. <laughs> Next up we have Jacob Howard. <laughs> then we have Lexi Johnson. Tamia Jones. Angelina Jordan. Thomas Liskowski.
Mia Liegos. Habib Majak. Andrew Porter. Brooklyn Sage. D'Angelo Stewart. Matthew Swope. Jace Wolerski. And Eva Zacher. That concludes our awards. Thank you so much. We'll go ahead and take a couple minute break and uh, then we'll start with uh, citizens comments when we come back. <clears throat> Do citizens comments so any any member who'd like to speak to the board for up to three minutes can can come on up uh, first I have Mr. Pulowski. Good evening, and thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. My name is Robert Pulowski. I'm the Wayne County Commission Youth Council member representing District 15. And today, um, I'm going to go a little bit back in history to our 2023 class. 
So from the day that our 2023 class started in kindergarten, the one thing that our teacher said was, we are gonna be the future of this country. It was a true fact. And now we are at this moment. I'd like to spread my deepest and best wishes to our 2023 graduating class for 2023. My peers, closest friends, and most of all, our future leaders will be able to take the next generation to where we need to be in life. From political science, to trade school, to urban planning, you name it. The careers are out there, and these group of classmates that I grew up with are going to take our world, but also our country, to the next level. I'd also like to recognize our awards tonight from our Robotics, our Varsity Awards for the three Athlete Awards, and also our Spring Titans. It's a true representation of a Titan. What does a Titan mean to you? A Titan is someone that puts the work in most of all day in and day out, 24 hours a day, coming in from 7.20 to 2.15 in the afternoon. They put their effort into sports, clubs, but also most of all, they come to board meetings every two weeks and speak highly of this district. We all know who's standing here doing that. <laughs> Most of all, we have passed a major step in Southgate Anderson's history, including our district. Our sinking fund, our sinking fund passed unanimously in the November <clears throat> 2022 election. Help and courtesy by me and closest friends that helped out from local sports and clubs to be able to help canvas at the polls to be able to make sure this passed. Now with that, we have a new paved parking lot, new football field, and also a new pool that our new 2024 seniors and future seniors and also our freshmen will be able to use this coming fall. We have a lot of accomplished in this district, and I am proud to say I'm a Titan, but also I am proud to be here as a Titan representing District 15 of Wayne County. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who'd like to speak tonight? All right, we'll go ahead and close public comment. And we have another presentation, which is the fiscal year 24 budget first read. Yes, I'm gonna have Barb just uh, talk us through it. She's gonna come down to the mic. Uh, since this is a first read, uh, our full budget hearing will be on the 27th of June, and uh, we'll use the projector at that time. Good evening. Uh, so you've all been given a copy of the first read of the 23-24 original budget. And I'm just going to walk you through uh, the assumptions that are a part of this upcoming uh, budget at the hearing. So if you're looking at uh, local, local sources, in that figure, we are including our local tax revenue of 18 mills, the full 18 mills on our tax, taxable non-principal residence property, except for commercial. And then also within this category, it reflects uh, the garish lease to Wayne County for Beacon. Can you hear me? No, sorry. <laughs> Maybe I should stand this way. There we go. Thank you. Uh, the next category is state sources, uh, 39730388 And within that category, we have assumed the foundation allowance projected to increase by $458 per pupil. That's the governor's 5% that she proposed. And the fall of 2023 enrollment is projected to increase by 150 pupils. And that is a combined adjustment in, due in part to the shared services agreement and loss of the Beacon students. We have also reflected a discontinuance of the 147C2, which is uh, retirement, a one-time only funding that was received in FY 2023. A 15% increase in at-risk funding and a reimbursement of FY23 special education costs at 75% are within the state sources figure. 
Moving down to the federal sources of 4,576,978. Uh, the big change there is that our ESSER three funding is expected to be fully expended by June of 24, June 30th. <coughs> and under the other sources of revenue, um, $2,878,243. Uh, the big change there is the enhancement revenue is budgeted at an additional $200,000, uh, likely due to increased property tax values. Moving down to your expenditures, um, under basic instruction, or actually in total instruction within the, these categories, we have all the negotiated contracts for the 23-24 included. Um, we have a hard cap increase of 4.1 percent for calendar year 2024. And our retirement costs are budgeted with an average cost of 31.34 percent, which is net of the total dollar amount in the UAAL offset. And so this is representing a 3.11 percent increase to our retirement costs. Uh, also, we have increased six general fund FTEs, um, and under the general administration category, there's been a bit of a change in central office. We have eliminated the assistant superintendent position, but it is replaced with a curriculum director, and our state and federal grant specialist position is being replaced with a state and federal grants director. Operations and maintenance, uh, the big change here is that our custodians were brought back in-house and there is no increase in custodial costs. Uh, pupil transportation, there is $840,000 budgeted by, um, covered by grants under transportation. And in community services, there, the $1,410,896 is due to the shared services expense costs at 77% of the revenue that we are to receive. So all of this brings our projected general fund balance to um, as a percentage of the prior year's expenditures, according to the board policy, 5002, is 19.1% for next year. And the following are unknowns at this time. Uh, the foundation allowance per pupil has not been determined by the state yet. They are required to finish their budget by July 1. The fall 2023 pupil count is an estimate at this time. And GASB, Governmental Accounting Standards Board, has issued a new pronouncement number 96. And that accounting process is still under review with our auditors at this time. And there's a possibility that when I'm given the guidance, we may end up with an increase further up to $350,000 to the fund balance. And that's about it. You can see the bottom line I'm projecting here is based on the proposed amended budget, which you will get next uh, board meeting of Carry forward 8,443,379, and that brings our June 30 of 24 fund balance projected to be 10,730,266. Any questions? So for the uh, hard cap cost increase for 4.1%, what's the average increase for the hard cap? It has not been very much for the last several years. This year we are seeing larger increases in retirement and hard cap on the health insurance. Okay. So it had been running between one and 2%. Okay, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you remind me on the uh, transportation yeah. investment? Uh, so the 840K, it's been covered by grants. Are they tied strictly to ESSER and, and other uh, COVID related uh, pay? No, just the uh, 500,000 from ESSER and the rest is coming from at risk and GSRP. And I think that's it. Let's see, it was 240, 500, 740, and then another 100 for GSRP. So those three grants are covering. And, and do they die? Is there a time frame when they die or cease to exist, those grants? Just the ESSER. 
So <laughs> Esser will be gone by that June 30. That half a million. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right, that'll take us to H, which is the consent agenda, which consists of minutes from the May 23, 2023 regular and closed session meetings, HR update, May 2023 disbursements, and expulsion of student 29901. There's been a motion on the consent agenda. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Okay, a motion by Dr. Pomponio. Is that supported? Support. Supported by Mr. Lamas. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. Action item one is approval of the bid award for the Hudson Building demolition. Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and have uh, Mr. Hardy come on up. <clears throat> Jason Hardy, I'm the Director of Operations with Southgate Community Schools. Uh, tonight I present uh, the proposal for the demolition of the Heinzen Building from the Sinking Fund. We had four companies bid on this project at this time. Uh, the scope of work we listed, there's 23 items. I hope you had a chance to look through them all. Um, I'm not going to read all those 23 items to you tonight. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Recommendation, Thomas Trucking Incorporated was the low bidder on the project. Uh, they've been in business for 25 years. They're a local downriver business. Uh, they're scheduled to demolish the Heinzen building is 28 working days from the start of the demolition. They're also the apparent low bidder, or se apparent second low bidder on the Taylor High School demolition. That is also, uh, was just out for bid. I listed some references of Wall Lake Consolidated Schools, South Redford School District, and Van Buren School District, where they've done work in demolished school buildings as well. Thomas Trunking Incorporated, I had a base bid of $320,000. We're gonna put on $150,000 in contingency costs for the unforeseen and unknown. And it is a recommendation tonight that the Board of Education approve the following bid from Thomas Trucking Inc for the total of $470,000 for the Heinzen demolition project, and this money will come from the sinking fund. Question. So I did talk to Danielle from Wald Lake Consolidated. Uh, my question is, uh, does this come as a package where they're gonna, uh, it's gonna encompass the electric, electrical, where they turn it on and shut it off, or the, do they subcontract some things out? Yes, yeah, so we have started the process of disconnecting the utilities because this is such a tight project. We had to start the process ourselves and Plant Moran have been working on contacting utility companies, the city, to get that process rolling. Okay. Um, the demolition contractor, Thomas Trucking, is to take that over from us and oversee all the disconnection, the permits, the fees, and all that that come along with it. And do they have subcontractors on any part of the job or is it just their company doing the, um, the work? From my understanding, in the post bid interviews, they're doing the work themselves. Okay, sounds good. Thank okay. you. Yep. Other questions? I'm seeing. Thank you. Okay. All right. Seeing no more questions for staff, we'll bring the discussion back to the table and entertain a motion on action item number one. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the bid award to Thomas Trucking Incorporated for the demo demolition of the Heinzen Building for $320,000 with a contingency of $150,000 for total project costs not to exceed $470,000 as presented. Okay, I have a motion by Dr. Pomponio. Is there support? Support. Support by Mr. Green. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Okay, I have action item number two, approval of the 2024 eighth grade Washington DC field trip. Yes, I'm gonna turn this over to Mr. Lindsay. Good evening, everybody. The annual eighth grade Washington DC field trip is uh, uh, was a success this past May, and uh, 
We are looking forward to doing it again next year. So the um, here's the information that is required for approval. I recommend approval. Um, it's a tremendous experience for the students that go to Washington, D.C. Any questions for staff? It's a comment. I just wanted to say this is a great program that was started, and I'm glad to see it continue. And also, I'm very impressed with the thoroughness of what's been uh, added here with the emergency evacuation plan, the liability insurance. That's really great to put together and give to us. Well, thank you. <laughs> I ran the program myself as an eighth grade social studies teacher. <laughs> okay. That's nice. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Mr. Freitas. I noticed that it's a little bit pricey for this uh, trip, but we know it right now, it could be laid out there at the beginning of the year so children can start saving, we can start fundraising for it. Um, I went on two trips myself with my daughters and the money is, it, you don't get the value out of it, it's the memories that you've made. You can just now go to all the seniors who just graduated and say, we were on bus number four and everybody knows what that meant. So the memories that you make on this trip are well worth it. And the fundraising that we had done in, pre in past years really helped alleviate the cost. And if anyone's really struggling with the cost for this, there are avenues. Just let people know early in advance and we can try to help. I, I really am impressed by our uh, Davidson staff that, that are so proactive in getting this organized a full year ahead of time. Um, that's something that was not done by someone I know that used to uh, organize this trip. Yeah, hyping it up now and getting the fundraising started is yeah. very critical. Okay. Any other questions for staff? All right. Seeing none, we'll bring the discussion back to the table and entertain a motion on action item number two. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the 2024 eighth grade Washington, D.C. field trip as presented. Okay, I have a motion by Dr. Pomponio. Is there support? Support. Support by Mr. Sage. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Mm. Any opposed? Mm. That motion passes. All right, action item number three approval of the JROTC field trip. So today we have uh, Sergeant Kumper presenting for our JROTC field trip. Uh, real excited to hear uh, and uh, have him present for us. Good evening. My name is Sergeant First Class Kumper and I'll be discussing our uh, JCLC or the JROTC Cadet Leadership Challenge, otherwise known as Summer Camp. It's gonna be at Camp Grayling this year. JCLC is uh, sponsored by Detroit Public Schools um, Community District and all Michigan wide schools that have GRC programs are invited and there will also be a couple schools from Indiana that will attend. The objectives of JCLC are to give cadets an opportunity to practice their leadership skills, to apply classroom knowledge in a real life environment and also to conduct adventure training. Adventure training is things that we cannot provide them at the school like rappelling, river rafting and land navigation. All cadets are issued four sets of the OCPs or the camouflage uniforms to include t-shirts and socks. The cost to cadets is no dollars. There is a $10 cost the National Guard charges for their t-shirt that they get at the end of camp, but uh, JROTC, we pick that, um, pick that price up out of our funds. On the 22nd of June, Colonel Dye and myself, along with the other instructors, will report to Camp Grayling to prepare the camp for the arrival of the cadets on 24 June. And on 29 June, there's graduation ceremony, which you are all invited to. If approved, we will meet, uh, cadets will meet at Lincoln Park on the 24th of June, meet up with Sergeant First Class Flew Hardy, a Lincoln Park JROTC instructor, who will be the chaperone for the bus, leave approximately 7.30, and arrive approximately at 11 o'clock at Camp Grayling and cadets will be taking a charter bus. Upon arrival, cadets will take part in a shakedown where all medicine is collected, cell phones are bagged and tagged, and any food that they have will be confiscated. 
JCLC, while at JCLC, cadets will be 100% supervised. They will not go anywhere by themselves unless their tax sergeant are with them or unless they're moving as a company. The daily schedule is very regimented. It starts with physical fitness in the morning, followed by breakfast, and then training throughout the day. After dinner, some cadets might attend pre-training, which gets them ready for training the next day so they don't have to take a lot of time to learn certain things at the training site so they can already be armed with some knowledge, and lights are out at 2100. Training events at JCLC include building a two-man, excuse me, a two-person tent, which cadets will sleep in overnight for one night. They have basic water safety training where cadets will not learn how to swim, but they will learn how to save somebody who's in trouble in the water without putting themselves at danger. At the land navigation site, cadets will plot an eight-digit grid coordinate on a military map and then tra uh, traverse the land navigation course in groups of five armed with their compass and protractor, or excuse me, compass and military map. They will also participate in river rafting. Cadets will also participate in air rifle marksmanship training where they will fire the air rifles, their pellet rifles. All the cadets have attended a rifle marksmanship safety class given by Lieutenant Colonel Dye a few weeks ago and have passed the rifle marksmanship safety exam. Cadets will also rappel down a 30-foot wall and also rappel, we call it a free rappel. At the leadership reaction course, they are giving an obstacle, some equipment, and the cadets have to come up with a way to traverse the obstacle. And it's really good for teamwork and communication. There's probably 45 different ways you could do it, but the key is to get them together to agree on a plan and to execute it. Cadets will participate in STEM training where they will learn about inertia, force, and thrust, and then build a rocket with that knowledge, their water rockets, and then afterwards conduct an after actions review to find out what they could have done better next time to make the rockets fly a little further. Last year, they also incorporated drone training where cadets will do some basic drone programming to make it conduct certain functions. Do I have any questions? Thank yes, ma'am. Uh, so the JRO JROTC cadets, typically in a school or do they all have to be physically fit to go to this or selected to go to this uh, camp because I know it's like a rigorous physical training they don't have to be in super great shape because six o'clock PT seven o'clock they got to be in the dining facility because the dining facility says I don't care what happens we're closing at eight o'clock whether your kids come through or not so it's more just to introduce them to in a military environment you're gonna do PT every day early in the morning. Right. So they probably do 15, 20 minutes of light to moderate exercise. Okay, and is this the camp where you bring back the video or slides to show us all the things that you guys did, uh, like for business? Is it like leadership and business portions uh, that things happen over there with the learning process? I'm just not, trying to remember. I'm not sure. I know that there was something that we Sounds get to like see. Top secret information you're trying to get a hold of there. <laughs> Yes, uh, my job. But I like to see, uh, you know, slides or a presentation of everything that you guys, the kids do when you guys come back, because I know we've seen it at some point. Correct. Uh, that's my job up at camp. I produce a daily newsletter with some help from the cadets, and also I produce a video. I'll make sure that I send that up to the administration building in first week in July. That sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? <clears throat> okay. Thank you. All right. We'll bring the discussion back to the table and I'll entertain a motion on action item number three. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the JROTC field trip as presented. Okay, I have a motion by Dr. Pomponio. Is there support? Support. Support by Ms. Angel. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, item number four approval of the tentative agreement with Southgate Administrative Assistance. Yes, I'm um, pleased to announce that we have reached an agreement with the Southgate Administrative Assistance. Uh, their membership group has uh, ratified this agreement. Um, we think it uh, is one that will serve both the district and the membership well, and uh, that does in 
involve increases over the next three years. So we're really excited about uh, this agreement and look forward to the board's approval of this. Okay. Any questions for staff? All right. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion on action item number four. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the tentative agreement with the Southgate Administrative Assistance as presented. Okay, I have a motion by Dr. Pomponio. Is there support? Support. Supported by Mr. Sage. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. Only one item left, which is a motion for adjournment. So moved. Everybody wants to stay. <laughs> so moved. I can't make a motion. He said so moved. So moved. Ah, a motion by Mr. Lamas to adjourn. Is there support? Everybody. <laughs> Mr. Green, support. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.